Waiter, could we have the bill, please? You're on the farm now, Wall. If we write a new policy, I'd have to move you into a new classification. One of Canada's best solo comedians is back in town to perform what has become one of Canada's theatrical institutions. I'm Shaw TV's Jeremy Valens, and later I'll tell you about Wingfield's Inferno at Prairie Theater Exchange. Senators, so uh, what classification will I become? Let's see. Um, you, you're it. Now that I'm a family man, I thought I should have a look at disability insurance. You know, five thousand dollars if you lose one hand. 10,000 for an eye, 25,000 across an arm and a leg, you cheerful stuff. And if you prefer not to dispose of yourself bit by bit, there's always accidental death. That's an excerpt from Prairie Theatre Exchange's latest production, Wingsfield's Inferno. And here again in town is Rod Beatty with Walt Wingfield. It's great to have you back here. Thanks to be back. <laughs> now I, tell I me. I brought the nice weather with me. Oh, that's your doing? Apparently, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so now you know who to blame. You should come here and express your opinions. <laughs> so Wingfield's, Inf yeah, Wingfield's Inferno, what's uh, the background on this? Well, this is Walt's sixth year now on the farm, trying to become a, a farmer. He still hasn't been able to leave the brokerage firm altogether because he has to, to s broker stocks to sustain his farming habit. Mm -hmm. um, this episode, con the main ep plot in this episode concerns the Orange Hall, which is the community resorts in Larkspur, and it burns to the ground. Walt is appointed chairman of the steering committee to rebuild it. He discovers, of course, in Walt fashion that he's been appointed this because it is impossible to do it, and uh, and then thereby hangs a tale. <laughs> so this week I had lunch with the insurance guy we always deal with in the city. I'll write something up, Walt. But there'll be major changes. Oh? Why is that? Waiter, could we have the bill, please? You're on the farm now, Walt. If we write a new policy, I'd have to move you into a new classification. Right now, you're A2, office worker. Pretty low risk. Just seeing that excerpt, I mean, learning about disability insurance, the way you describe it, it's, it's pretty wonderful. It's really hard not to laugh during the media excerpt here. <laughs> yeah, well, this uh, insurance is, is uh, one of our targets in this episode. Uh, You'd be F-18. That's parachute testers, bomb defusers, and farmers and F-18 pilots. We've it's become aware over the last few years of just the degree to which insurance runs our lives and, and gradually diminishes our quality of life, even more so in small communities like Larkspur than in the, in the big cities. But it, it hits everybody. You were here, what, two, two years ago for Wingfield on Ice. How does this connect to that? Well, we're covering the elements one by one. You know. mm -hmm. That's with, oh, I remember. Mom used to talk about her. The wild cat of the Pluto Mars. <laughs> Earth and air next. <laughs> <laughs> so insurance fits in. I, I didn't know that was one of the elements, insurance. <laughs> well, that's the bomb, you see. It shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about being back in Winnipeg presenting Wingfield? Well, it's, it's great to be back here. It's a lovely place to play in, this theater. And the audience here last time was terrific. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, last time around, sell out crowds. They had to add extra productions just to accommodate. Maybe the same will happen again for you. Well, you never know. <laughs> well, you might want to come and check out Wingfield Inferno. It's here at the Prairie Theatre until November 30th. For Shot TV, I'm Jeremy Valens. Nothing. No. I can't afford it. Don't know who can. But my real insurance is those seven guys out there. He pointed to the neighboring farms dotted around the Pine River Valley. Oh, if I get laid up and can't get the crap off, those fellows will be on my fields tomorrow. They know I do the same for them. Yeah, Walt, well, count on your neighbors, Walt. Yeah, s stick with your A2 uh, 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 office worker classification. Then, then if, if, if you get hurt bad, we, we'll dra drag you inside the house and, and, and drop a filing cabinet on you. Now that I'm a family man, I thought I should have a look at disability insurance. You know, $5,000 if you lose one. Thanks for sticking around with us this morning. We are finding out a little bit more in a bit now about Prairie Theatre Exchange's latest production, Wingfield Inferno. I am joined by actor Rod Beatty. Thank you so much for coming down here today, Rod. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this show, Wingfield Inferno. What can you tell us about it? Well, this is the sixth play in the Wingfield series. Each one deals with Walt Wingfield, who is a stockbroker, trying to be 
become a farmer. He's, uh, he's had some sort of midlife crisis, and he feels that the, uh, the brokerage world isn't do doing it for him, so he moves to the country, buys a farm, and each play covers roughly a year in his, uh, his quest to become a gentleman farmer. Now, you're the sole actor in this show, but not the sole character. Uh, how does that how does that work? How do you how many different characters are you playing first off? I don't know. <laughs> um, there are there are probably about ten or twelve main ones, but there are there are characters that have have very small parts, such as the dog Spike and the baby Hope. <laughs> um, but uh, but the luxury about having only one actor uh, in the cast is you don't have to pay everybody. <laughs> it, uh, we, we discovered, my brother's the director of this, and, and Dan, the author, Dan Needles, and I discovered after some forays into the commercial theater that the secret to this thing is to eliminate the cast. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, we do have a, a bit of a clip, so you can kind of get an idea of, of what it is that we're talking about here. What can you tell us about what we're about to see? This is, uh, this is Walt. Walt is now dealing with, because he's a, a new parent, he's dealing with the need for uh, beefing up his insurance policy. Okay, all right, let's take a look. Dear Ed, now that I'm a family man, I thought I should have a look at disability insurance. You know, $5,000 if you lose one hand, 10000 for an eye, 25000 will cost you an arm and a leg. Cheerful stuff. And if you prefer not to dispose of yourself bit by bit, there's always accidental death. That particular black hole is worth more than the sum of your parts. I still have a disability policy at the firm, but I thought it should be updated. So this week I had lunch with the insurance guy we always deal with in the city. I'll write something up, Walt. But there'll be major changes. Oh? Why's that? Waiter, could we have the bill, please? You're on the farm now, Walt. If we write a new policy, I'd have to move you into a new classification. So, uh, what classification will I become? Let's see, um, you'd be... F-18. That's parachute testers, bomb defusers, and farmers. And F-18 pilots. It's more expensive. Well, just a bit of an example there of uh, the multiple characters that you play. So how do you go about separating them in your own head, let alone keeping them uh, separate for the audience? Well, I, don't, I think it's what actors do, you know. I mean, you, the, you work on a part, and uh, I used to be a... Uh, a Shakespearean actor at Stratford and uh, and have a number of parts in the repertoire at any given time and uh, and so doing this is just like doing that except you do it from moment to moment instead of from day to day but we're, I mean, we're talking voices, facial expressions, everything seems to be there. And um, from hearing some of the, uh, the critiques about it, there is no question in the audience's mind as to who you are at any given moment. They seem to be following right along with you every step of the way, which I think is, is so incredible. What was it about this show that, uh, that attracted you to it? Well, it's partly that. It's the kind of acting that I li I've always liked to do. I, uh, it's, it's fun to create characters like, like that. It's fun to let the audience exercise its imagination in keeping them distinct. The, the idea is that they, they have an experience that they, they feel they've seen a, a whole community rather than simply one person. I also feel as if it kind of takes the pressure off me, because, of course, actors are very shy people, and, uh, and we like to hide behind the parts. And if you have 15 parts, it's easier to hide behind them than if you have one. <laughs> I, uh, I never would have thought of putting it that way, but uh, I guess that's a, a very interesting point. Uh, it's running right now up until the 30th of November, and, uh, and every Tuesday I understand that you actually stick around and, uh, and chat with the audience a, a little bit. How has that been going? We haven't had one yet. Oh, okay. So uh, tonight's the first go at it, and uh, they, they, get to, uh, they get to talk at me after I get to talk at them, so we'll see. Is that more nerve-wracking then once you're outside of your character. I mean, as you mentioned, actors tend to be very shy people and like to hide behind their characters. So um, is, is that something that, uh, that you feel like a, a little bit of pressure to be stripped down and just be sitting there as, as Rod and being thrown questions? Well, audiences are generally pretty gentle about that stuff. Um, but, you know, we'll see. 
It's uh, it's terrifying, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. It's on right now up until the 30th of November, and we actually have a pair of tickets to be giving away for that uh, performance on the 30th of November. Pardon me, November 20th, sorry, is where the tickets are for. What we want you to do is get online, win at chumtv.com. Uh, send us an email. Make sure you include your name and your phone number in there, and you could have a chance at winning these tickets for the show. Rob, thank you so much for coming down and telling us a little bit about this play. It looks absolutely fascinating from the clips that we've seen. I'm sure to uh, see it in person even better. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. All right, we've got to be taking a break. We'll be back with a lot more BT. Stick around, please.